So I recently joined an 80s hair metal cover band. And my seven string Carvin Telecaster was not gonna cut it for the Motley Crue tunes. So I needed to pick up a new guitar. Fortunately for me, Ibanez just released a reissue of their original 1987 RG550. Perfect timing. The Ibanez RG was introduced in 1987, with its first model being the RG550. It was designed as a less expensive version of Steve Vai's signature guitar, the Gem 777. They simplified the tremolo a little bit and they took out that monkey grip thing, uh, but they left the most important features, that distinctive body shape, the edge tremolo, and most importantly, that paper-thin wizard neck. Over the years, Ibanez has released a lot of variations on the RG design. There was the RT series in 1992, where it seemed like they thought they were Fender for a minute. There was the more affordable RX series, and of course their higher-end Prestige and more recently Iron Label series. Now growing up, I actually had an RG350DX. It was one of my first electric guitars. Uh, in fact, I still have it. Now, why didn't I use this in the 80s band? Uh, my wife asked me the same question. There's a very good reason why I needed to buy a new guitar, and it's, um... The common features of an Ibanez RG are this super strap body design with the, you know, extremely sharp carved horns on the edge there. Uh, the body is made out of basswood or basswood. I don't know which one it is. Uh, it typically has a 24 fret maple neck. This one has been layered with walnut for extra stability and because it looks really cool. The fingerboard on an RG is typically made out of rosewood, as you can see on the white Ibanez I have back there. This one's made out of maple, which has a slightly harder feel, and it looks really 80s. The five-piece Super Wizard neck is incredibly thin. It's only two-thirds of an inch thick and 1.7 inches wide. The scale length, which is the distance from the bridge to the nut, is 25 and a half inches, which is your standard Stratocaster scale. Uh, but the radius, the, the flatness of the neck, is 17 inches, which is way flatter than a Stratocaster's nine and a half inch radius. It's made out of five layers of maple and walnut, and it has a satin finish on the back of the neck, which is really important to me. A glossy or painted neck can tend to catch my thumb during shows, and uh, especially during this kind of gig, I need to be moving really fast up and down the neck, so the satin finish is a nice touch. So on first impressions, uh, one, this thing is red. It's really, really red. The official description is road flare red, which is hilarious to me. Uh, and for context, I'm colorblind. Specifically, I have almost no red receptors, and I can see this thing is insanely red. It's a stunning design overall. This is like the epitome of what an Ibanez RG is supposed to look like. Uh, and it's got all these really nice 80s touches like these classic hat style knobs instead of the speed knobs they have on the newer ones. This just really helps drive home that 1987 feel. Now onto how this guitar plays. There's a certain feel you get with higher end guitars. Uh, I'm not the kind of guy who says you need to go out and spend thousands of dollars on gear before you can play. Uh, you know, I all my first videos were made on a $200 Ibanez with a copy of GarageBand. But when you do start to move into professional higher-end models made in the US or Japan like this one, uh, there is a big difference in feel and in the fit and finish of the guitar, how solidly constructed it feels. And this guitar is no exception. Every little detail of this feels perfectly put together. Uh, there's so many nice touches. This metal backplate on the neck instead of just the screws driven into the body like you'd see on a lower end model. The Godo tuners on the headstock are rock solid. These are not, you know, Ibanez uh, licensed tuners. These are genuine Godo tuners on here. This neck is insanely thin and plays super fast right out of the box. If you're not used to a really thin necked guitar, uh, this might feel a little weird for you if you're coming from a, a Les Paul or Stratocaster. But if you are into this kind of feel on a guitar, this one is fantastic. Also, the edge tremolo feels fantastic right out of the box. Dive bombs, you know, pick squeals, all those whammy bar flutters that are getting really popular now, they all feel amazing on this tremolo. Now, I guess most importantly, how does this guitar sound? Ibanez's pickups have never blown me away, to be honest. Uh, their pickups are never as hot or bright as I want them to be. Uh, but again, I'm always playing really loud, aggressive, 
fast music. So I'll tend to lean towards something like a DiMarzio Super Distortion, which is what I put in my other Ibanez, and frankly what I'm going to put in this one as soon as this review is finished. Now, that's not to say this is a bad sounding guitar. I've been gigging on it for a couple months already with the band, and nobody's complained. I've had a lot of fun playing it. It sounds great. I'm just being picky. I love everything else about this guitar, and that's the one place I feel like I can improve something on it. Here's a demonstration of each pickup position on this guitar with both clean and distorted sounds. And I'll leave a link to these in the description down below so you can take a closer listen. <laughs>
The Ibanez Genesis RG550 is a fantastic recreation of the original 1987 design with a modern feel. If you're looking for something with that 80s flair, or want to own a piece of Ibanez history, or just looking for a really good metal guitar, uh, the RG550 is a fantastic choice. Be sure to check out the demo video I did of this guitar with an original song. Uh, I'll put a link here in the end card and also down in the description. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below and subscribe for more videos like this one. I'm Dean DeMarzo here on Longest Solo Ever. I'll see you next time.